friends, drafters, welcome to our little adventure here for the next hour. Uh, I, I like to start off uh, each little uh, uh, class with a, a, a quote. Um, and, and this one's something I said a long time ago. Uh, the path that you see is not always the only way. And as you all know with Revit, there you pick a path depending upon the end product and sometimes you lose some options. It's just the, just the path you took. And I have been in this trade for uh, drafting for 20 years, various um, various capacities. All these images here represent me to some degree. I uh, every meeting I attended, whether it was with the owner or fellow designers or, or design team, always ended up learning something from it. Uh, you know. So because of all that experience, I'm, I am pretty good at bringing perspective to things. My uh, primary goal to any class is to give you more tools for your tool belt so that you are as prepared a drafter as you can be. And on the other side of that, it is the responsibility of the student to take this new knowledge and break it down to the tools that you need to make yourself a better drafter. And then you also have to layer on top of that, of course, what is appropriate for your company's processes. Uh, I've worked with a few companies over the years, and what I see is that sometimes they will handle something here or they will handle something there. As long as, in, you know, the, the company's good at handling it, and that's, that's their process. Alrighty, so let's dive into it a little bit, shall we? Uh, I know this is a Revit tips and tricks, but with using Revit, you're probably going to be using AutoCAD. And I just like to go through this uh, list. Uh, I'll, we will also go through one for Revit here after this. So there will be times when you're drafting and your, your brain gets all stormy and you, you can't figure out which way's out. You, you're, you get lost, right? Um, and this is where to look when you're lost. I can't make it work here. Here we go. Um, look in the properties. AutoCAD properties are slightly different than, than Revit, but there's a lot of good information in the properties. Pay attention to the command line. The command line itself is kind of an audit trail of what's going on. And it also tends to tell you what it's asking for. Right click is very common through a lot of programs. It, in general, will give you options on the thing that you have selected, what you can do with it. It is, it is very handy to help getting you unstuck. And I like to say, uh, look in your AutoCAD Bible. So whether it's your AutoCAD Bible or your Revit Bible, it, it's essentially your, your, your condensed notes to yourself. You don't write it, want to write an entire book, but you do want to write inside of it the things that will help save you time and effort. With AutoCAD, um, it is very easy to write down the routine and the what the routine will do for you. Um, like I have in my notes here, uh, all. Uh, if you're in a command uh, and it's asking for a selection, you can use this tool to select all. And another one, um, I just wrote this one down because it was cool. Uh, 3D print service creates an STL file for 3D printing. So it's little things like that, little little nuggets to help get you moving. Again, you you do have to find these things when uh, when you need them. So don't you don't want to write an entire book. It's a little log book. Uh, I'm, I'm and if you all don't have one, I'm I'm sure we could uh, somehow provide you one. Center just does have have some. 
All right, now I'm gonna actually show you these locations in AutoCAD. So, let me go to AutoCAD. So look in the properties. If you select anything, you can look in the properties window um, and it'll give you all sorts of good information here. The command line uh, is uh, down here. If you want to hit F2, you'll bring up this window. It is an audit trail of everything you've done. So you can look back if you've done something. Uh, you can look to see what it's asking for next. It's all sorts of good information. And of course, right click. If you select on something and right click, it'll start giving you options based on the things you have selected. And at times, also, if you don't have anything selected, like here, here's um, clipboard stuff. You can cut and cut with base point, copy, copy with base point, and here are the the shortcuts for it too. If you want to, if you're curious. All right. Now let's get into the uh, top nine list of rev things to look for if you're lost. A little, little bit more uh, uh, locations to look. Look in the properties. That'll be common through a lot of programs. Uh, pay attention to the options bar, the contextual ribbon. And also pay attention to the status bar, the view control bar. There are a lot of bars in, in Revit to, to look for. And I'll, I'll show it to you after I get through this list. Um, tap escape three times. It is a way to get out of routine. Uh, the only time you can't get out of routine is if you're in sketch mode. Um, if you see a little check mark or an X somewhere, you're in sketch mode. And that the only way to get out is to accept the changes or to um, X out of the changes, cancel them all. But there will be times where you're caught in between a routine and you want to escape out of it. Just be careful not to hit the, the F1 button a lot. Um, right click. So there it is again. And of course, um, use all of the search functions. As Revit matured, it added in a lot of search functions to help help your finger joints out a lot. And you know, take advantage of them. Now, this bit of advice is a little bit more for any time you're working in anything 3D. Know where you are know how you're looking at it, know what you did, know what else it affected, and most importantly, what it actually did. Sometimes you're telling Revit what you and think is one thing, but you're telling it something different slightly. And this was a big aha moment to me. All Revit is is a big family viewer. Everything in Revit's a family. All the views are families. All the view templates are families. Of course, the traditional families of walls and ceilings and, and um, uh, outlets that you're placing on the walls, those are all families as well. But it, as soon as I kind of understood that, it, it just made everything easier. And of course, look in your Revit Bible. Um, Revit Bible tends to be more about facts. Um, you could write shortcuts in here. Um, inform general information that you've done. One of the first things I wrote in here was essentially a partial explode, strips, strips away one layer, full explode. Strips away all layers. It, it is little facts to yourself. Again, you, you can't overwhelm yourself in writing a, a 
a huge look to yourself. Uh, and you want to, you do want to try to avoid that. Sorry. All right, now let me show you. So let me go to an actual floor plan or a um, well plan. So what I mean by the properties is, here it is. This is all the properties you thing you have selected. And semi-unique to Revit uh, com when compared to AutoCAD is that when you don't have anything selected, you are selecting the view you're in or the sheet. So the properties will, will be displayed here. AutoCAD can do that in certain situations, but, but with Revit, it does permeate through all out Revit. You, you always, in, in an essence, have something selected for the properties. Now, I got to get a routine running to show you. The contextual tab obviously will change depending upon what routine you're running. Um, and also the options bar here. Probably about 95% of these things uh, you can change after the fact. But it doesn't hurt to give it a once over before you actually start drawing. All right. And paying attention to the the uh, status bar and the view control bar, right? View control bar and the status bar. Mostly over here helps out a lot. So here is where Revit is actually talking to you. It's telling you what to do next in the routine. And if I were to say escape out of the routine, it's telling me, hey, it's time to select something. And by the way, here's some things you can do to select them. And of course, right click. If you right click uh, without selecting on anything, it gives you this. And then if you start selecting stump something and right click, it will give you some extra options. It is. It does, um, in essence, give you options based upon the thing you have selected. Now, one thing I talk about is the search functions. That gets a little bit different. It is embedded all throughout Revit. So newer in the project browser is this ability to look through everything in the project browser. That is all the families, all the views, all the sheets, and it starts filtering through it. It is pretty neat and handy because now you don't have to scroll up and down everywhere if you know what you're looking for. Um, one, the older versions, if you right clicked in here, there would be a search function in here. It didn't necessarily filter everything down, but you could search through all of it in older versions. And then it will tell you to go up or down in the project browser to find those things. And it'll, it'll slowly take you through the entire list. But if you see this here, it is a way to filter through all the content below. One way to look at it is when you start doing, uh, changing the types, it, it's here. When you start seeing lists, this search function is here. Um, it's not always there in older versions, uh, but you know, as this program matures, it will it permeates through Revit pretty well. There are a lot, a lot of nice additional functions like find in project browser. So if I want to find this view in the project browser, which I essentially have the view selected, it will take me to it. If I want to find an item that I have selected in the project browser, it'll take me to it. So that that's very handy. There is also this find referring views helps you get around. So find referring views is finding all the views that this view is either referred in or referring to. So if I 
do this, I can go into an elevation. Now I'm in an elevation. Uh, if I go into the elevation, I do find referring views. I can take back to, it, this is anywhere that the call out for this elevation is located. So if I go to this one, it not only takes me to that view, but it selects it. So it shows me where it is. Thing, things like that are tremendously handy. Uh, and then, of course, the rest of my um, uh, rest of my tips when you're lost are get my current slide back. I apologize. Um, are more advice. I like to show this uh, because when you do hit the F1 button, it will take you to the help um, and common throughout all Autodesk products, in the top left, there will be these pull downs. Uh, what's new in AutoCAD? What's new in AutoCAD 2024? And then also the previous releases. So if you find yourself in between markups and you have some time in your hands, uh, poke around in there. I'll, I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Oh, I hit the wrong button. So um, that takes me to the file save locations. File save locations are extremely valuable to know. If you've been drafting on the same computer for five-ish years, uh, you'll get to the point where your C drive is full. And if, when your computer is working fine, it's like every time you click, it says, yep, okay, on it, done, got it, right? Uh, but when your C drive's full, it's like every click you take, it starts saying, I'll try, we'll see, maybe, eh. And basically what's happening is the hard drive can't save the data to the C drive fast enough because it's full. So if you were to, uh, how how do you kind of just check it there and what timeline do you do you use well there is no real timeline just keep an eye on it every once in a while uh, sometimes you could be opening a project that dumps 500 gigs worth of information on your c drive uh, i've had that happen once before um, and i had to remember to clear out my c drive before the project and when I was done with it, if I'm sure I wasn't going to opening it tomorrow. Um, sometimes it might take a, a few months for it to, for your C drive to fill up. Sometimes it'll take a year. Just it just depends. But if you, excuse me, open up Windows and go to this PC, it will show you right here if your C drive is full or not. Definitely, definitely handy. And yes, you can go in here and go into the properties and do a disk cleanup. And it will, however you get to this disk cleanup, it does go through temporary files on Windows, but this doesn't find Revit files. It doesn't find AutoCAD files, doesn't find PDFs that you don't need anymore. I like to have a, a, a default folder where I try to path everything to there, all my autosave stuff, all my PDFs that I'm making. Um, then I'll take those PDFs and I'll dump it in the project folder. That was just my personal process. But I had one, I try to path all these things to one location to help the cleanup process. So let me go back to the slide here. So with Revit, there are two potential locations. If you are working on BIM 360 in Construction Cloud, a cloud project, I'll just call it. There is a different location than your Revit local save files. 
if you are in working in 2023 and older, this location here is baked into the, the program. You can't change it, can't modify it. Um, it's every version you'll have to get into and clear out the cache. And essentially everything in that collaboration cache folder, just delete it. And on a, as a side note, um, if you go up one folder, there'll be a, where your journal files are. Kind of neat, if you start a project, I've seen people take a journal file and drag it into Revit and start building things for them until it can't and crashes, but you know. For 2024, you do have control over where these uh, files are saved. So a subtle difference between a pro when you're working on a cloud project and a local project, uh, local project being you're on a network drive, everyone in the company can see. So, and the, of course the cloud files are, you know, in the cloud. Uh, what I've seen historically is when you're working in a cloud file, not only does it download your file you're working in, but it downloads any link that you're working with and puts it inside of your C drive, which makes sense, uh, but can, that's part of the reason why I was had one project that was um, taking up 500 gigs. The local files themselves, when you're working on a common network drive and you're working on a central file, the local file itself is really just that file. It doesn't really pull the links across. So let me let me show you where those are located. So when it comes to 2024, if you go into the file and the options, you have the ability to go to this cloud model option. And here is the location that you're saving those to. Again, that location is hard coded in 2023 and older. When you're working on a network drive and you have a central model, the local, the default path for the user files is here. I like, again, I like to change them to a common location. It just helps me clear out stuff on my C drive. But every year has these settings. Well, not every year has this setting, but every year has this setting. So you have to do, you do have to go into these settings to check to see where it's putting these files to, to delete them. And one, one note, um, when you do delete these files, ensure you have Revit closed and AutoCAD closed and your PDF editing tool closed when you go to look all, for all these files. You don't want to accidentally delete the file you need. I have this thing here for Bluebeam and I only have it here because it doesn't matter what PDF editing tool you have, sometimes that program will need a C drive location just to save something. Um, and this is where it was for me when I used Bluebeam. Pay attention to these brackets, this, this will be your, your username. But it, it is a nice place to go to clear out stuff. Um, AutoCAD also does have an autosave that you can locate. So if I can show you an AutoCAD real quick. All right, here you are in AutoCAD. Uh, if you right click in the um, uh, command line window down here, uh, you can go to options. Doesn't really matter how you get here. As long as you can get over to this files tab and then look at the automatic save file location. Um, you can path it to wherever you want by hitting browse, uh, but this is location where it will dump your autosave files. Nice place to go to, to delete out files you don't need anymore. All righty. Windows 10 does have something called storage sense. 
it does tie into your Autodesk Docs if you use Autodesk Docs. Um, Autodesk Docs and Desktop Connector Cache is kind of two ways to download online files to your local computer. Just, um, you, you, they're a little unique in, in both how they work, but when it comes to the storage sense, if you go into the Windows, start and go into settings, you can just type in storage. And you're looking for this, how to change storage sense uh, freeze up space. In essence, what you can do is you can tell storage sense to run that routine to clear out temporary files. Um, you can tell it to run at certain times or hopefully you're way before you get low on free disk space. Delete temporary files, look how far back in, in, in all of it. But if you have Autodesk docs there, you have this option to basically totally release the file so it's an online only. You'll still see your project folders there. You'll just see it as a online only version. So it'll take a little bit for the program to download it to your local computer again, if that's what you desire. I, I would not mess with your OneDrive personally. Companies have uh, ways of using that to back up your files. But again, you can turn on this to help automate deleting temporary stuff and if you're using Autodesk Docs. Now, showing you the desktop connector cache location is a little bit difficult, I apologize. Um, but over here on this image, on your main desktop, there'll probably be a little arrow to pull the, out and there'll be a Autodesk Docs icon. Finding how to change workspace means you gotta go into the help pullout and change workspace. And then you can change the location. Uh, default, lo whoop, I am sorry, I hit the button. Uh, the default location is here, but you can change it if you want. And if you go there, same as if you were looking at it um, at the Autodesk Docs, you'll see your project folders, online project folders. All righty, so uh, we've got through the file locations matters. Now let me get into some um, shortcuts. There we go. So inside of Revit, uh, I like to call them the FN keys because, well, for a few reasons. Um, one of them, if you go into the view ribbon and this user interface pull down, and then you go into the keyboard shortcuts, or oddly enough, you type in the shortcut for shortcuts, it brings you to here. So the shortcut itself looks like this, FN1 in brackets. So in here, you can uh, find shortcuts. It, it is a nice place to look around. If you look through them all. Shortcuts in, in Revit are not always active. They're kind of active dependent upon, if you will, the mode that you're in. But some of these are active all the time. It is nice to go through here. Like I know visibility graphics, VV, always takes you here. So it does help speed up your process. But when it comes to the FN keys, uh, F1 is not escape. That is for sure. But if you keep hitting a lot, it'll do this. Now, it only brings you to help once. The problem is you start hitting F1 again and it thinks you're trying to do the help for your browser. So be careful 
when you're like, why is escape not working? Oh, well, that's why. <laughs> um, and again, just to show you the what's new in Revit, what's new in the previous releases. Oh, I'm sorry. What's new in the previous releases. It is kind of neat to poke around here and look at stuff. F uh, the F1 button is pretty common through a lot of programs. Uh, when you hit the F5 button, it is refresh. Doesn't do a lot in Revit, although you, if you look down here to the bottom left, you can kind of see it refreshing a little bit. Uh, F5 is a pretty common through a lot of um, program shortcuts. Now, here's something I didn't know until fairly recently, kind of wish I would have learned this a long time ago. The F7 button is spell check. This is another um, shortcut that is pretty common through a lot of programs. And if you're familiar with uh, spell check in Revit, it will save you a lot of time. So far, I don't know of a global spell check, so. The, the F8 button is a steering wheel. Uh, like this thing, don't like this thing, you know, it's here. The F9 button is the systems browser. So if you work with systems, which is the MEP trades majority, um, it is nice to be able to turn it on and off. That's the F9 button. So the F10 button is key tips. Um, kind of like shortcuts, but different. So if you hit F10, you'll see all these buttons come up in the ribbon. So it is, it is in essence a way to go through the ribbon without actually clicking on anything, mostly. So if I want to go into the collaborate ribbon, I hit the C. If I want to go into the um, coordination review button, I hit V. Now, I got to hit select link, but it, it can get you through the ribbon. Kind of neat. You, you can't just do it anytime. You do have to activate the key tips. So you have to hit the, 10, the F10 button to start it. Well, I mean, you have to activate the key tips to start going through it. So uh, the F11 button is background processes. So there are certain things in Revit you can do and you can tell it to run this in the background. And essentially that's the way to pull it up. If you wanna know if, if Revit's kind of running a little bit slow for you, maybe you hit F11 to see if you have if you've triggered any background processes. And for sure, if you take advantage of that, it'd be nice to know that it's, it's going through it. And that is all the uh, F and keys uh, shortcuts. I do want to go through some uh, additional ones here. So something neat is that if you hit, if you're in the project browser and you hit control and you hit the plus sign, or the negative sign, you can see that it is plusing, opening that file structure and closing it with negative. That's kind of neat. Prior versions, and it doesn't work this way anymore, you can expand and um, close all of them by using the, the, the control and multiply, divide, but if you want to expand all, you can here, and if you right click again, you can collapse all. If that's what you're looking for. If you want to go into the key tips, you don't, also, you don't have to always hit the F10 key, uh, button, 
you can hit the alt button and it does activate them. So I can go into the view ribbon now and I don't know, that's elevation to get there at least. Now, if my mouse is funky, uh, I can hit the up and down button to select these two. And then once I have the button selected, I can hit enter and it will run the routine. When you go into the shortcuts, I do like to say, pay attention to the snaps. What are the snap shortcuts? Because there might be times that you wanna do a snap override, but when you right click, it kicks you out of the routine. So it helps to know what the shortcuts are when you're drafting something in. So if I were to do a, a line and for whatever reason, let's just say I can't snap to the endpoint or the midpoint, I have that on already. If I do a shortcut, which was in this case was SE for snap endpoint. It will only show me the endpoints. You can right click and go to snap overrides and there's some pretty cool ones here like a snap between uh, two points. But you're not always guaranteed to when you right click stay in the routine. Uh, some common shortcuts I like uh, are VV for visibility graphics, takes you here. Uh, if you do VR, it will take you to the view range, which takes you here. There are plenty of shortcuts, and I do hope that you spend the time to, to look through them. They, they can be tremendously handy. In, in helping you speed up a little bit. Um, I do have a little spill about that, is that sometimes the long path, you bump into things that you didn't intend in bumping into. Um, if you're using the shortcut, you're not looking at the ribbon. One like or dislike the ribbon, one nice thing about the ribbon it, is it exposes you to buttons that you may not have ever thought of looking for. I don't know, maybe you're looking to annotate and you're like, oh, that's where the component is, or oh, that's where a revision cloud is, or find and replace, which is something you can do globally. It does kind of take a little bit more um, to look through the manage and you find things that maybe you weren't expecting to find, like the review warnings or select by ID. But it, it, it is, it, it doesn't hurt to take the long right way every once in a while just to kind of poke around and learn something. It, yes, if you're doing something a thousand times, yeah, well, sure, take advantage of the shortcuts. But every once in a while, you know, smell the roses, take the long way around. You can learn something. And let me go back to the slideshow here. I do truthfully hope you all learned something. And it uh, looks like I'm a little bit ahead of it. So I'll give you some time back for the day. Uh, I do like to say that it takes a team uh, it, with anybody you're talking to. If you're talking to a, a consultant uh, or a, another drafter at another company, there's always a team behind them. Everywhere from the, uh, everywhere from the janitor to the principal, they're all, they're all taking time to do something. So don't, don't, uh, don't neglect that there are people behind the people you're talking to. I, I will say, we at Synergist are an eternal spring of knowledge. I mean, look at all those folks here. Look, there's even a guy at the head of the table. He's a very knowledgeable person. 
And in essence, we are trying to help one company at a time. Friends, drafters, it has been a pleasure. <laughs>